Barely two years ago, Jason Tamalolo was widely seen as the best lock in the game, but sudden rule changes have seemingly seen him slip down the pecking order. Former Brisbane Broncos forward Corey Parker has called for the North Queensland Cowboys to dump their club captain and highest paid player. But should the Cowboys really be cutting ties with one of their most potent attacking weapons, or do they need to restructure their attack? Let's go back to 2020, and in that year, Jason Tamalolo averaged 207 running metres per game. That was his career best. That put him in third across the competition behind James Tedesco and Roger Tuibasa-Shek, who, as fullbacks, get the benefit of kick returns. Tamalolo was the only forward in the top 10. In fact, you have to drop down to 12th place to find James Fisher-Harris, the next best forward, and he averaged 179 metres per game. But this is nothing new. In 2019, Tamalolo occupied the same position with 196.6 metres. Payne Haas was in fifth with 185.2 metres. And they were the only two forwards inside the top 10. We've known how good Tamalolo is for a long time. You have to go back to 2015 to find him sitting outside the top 10 for average running metres per game. Now, when Tamalolo debuted back in 2010, teams were trending towards workhorses and metre readers to play at lock. They made their tackles and took hit-ups. There were some outliers there. Parramatta had Felidi Matteo, who wasn't known for his work rate or his thirst for hit-ups, and Manly had Glenn Stewart, who was a very noted ball player. But when you look across squads and see Michael Luck at the Warriors, Chris Hyington at the Tigers, Ashley Harrison at the Titans, David Stagg for the Bulldogs, Corey Parker for Brisbane, and Sean Fensom at Canberra, and, well, you get the idea. And just quickly, the Bulldogs under Des Hasler ripped teams apart with ball-playing forwards but they were an exception to the norm and were ultimately unable to win a premiership with that style of play. Ball-playing locks were outliers and fast becoming obsolete due to teams prioritising control of the ruck. Teams would hang on to the old ball-playing forward out of variety, but it wasn't anywhere near what we saw in the 1990s or 2000s when you could have smaller, more mobile locks who were often just larger 5 eighths. You had players like Brett Kenny, Brad Fittler, Brayton Astor, Laurie Daly and Daniel Wagon who all wore the number 13. They weren't packing into the front row occasionally like many modern locks could and still do. In 2020, the NRL issued its now infamous 6 a.m. rule changes. The rule changes somehow didn't immediately impact Tamalolo, who averaged 18.3 runs per game, which is the most number of runs per match he's averaged in his career. He wasn't averaging any extra minutes each match. His 61 minutes per game were the same as 2019, and fewer than 2018, 2017, and 2014. But in 2021, things changed. He went from more than 200 metres per game to just 155 metres per game. His average number of runs dropped to 14.5, a total drop of nearly 4 runs per match, and his minutes dropped to 59, the first time he'd been below 60 since 2016. Coach Todd Payton had spoken about getting more out of Tamalolo in shorter bursts, and he obviously tried to lower his workload. But should he have simply been looking to just limit his wrecking ball's workload? Or should he have been looking to get more out of him while dropping his on-field minutes? Tamalolo was still the best meter-reading lock in the game last year. He was above Luke Thompson, Tino Faasua Malawi, Alex Twal, Nelson Asofa Solomona. You name him, JT13 was better when it came to meters per match. However, the funny thing is, the further down the list you go of meters per game for locks, often the better the team. The Storm's two preferred locks in Tui Kamakamitha and NAS are in 12th and 13th respectively. Jairo was in 14th from Souths, Penrith's Isa Yo, 17th, Parramatta's Nathan Brown, 19th, and Dale Finucane, also from the Storm, was in 20th. Cam Murray was 23rd, Jake Jaborovic, 37th, Brandon Smith, 42nd, and Victor Radley in 56th. Now, of course, there are some locks further down the list from bad teams. Just because a lock had low running metres didn't mean they are in a good team. They could just be bad at running the ball, and their team could also be bad at running the ball overall. Perhaps, though, the two most interesting stats to look at are the number of one-pass hit-ups and the number of general play passes per game. One-pass hit-ups are the runs a player takes with only one pass thrown, which is the pass from dummy half. It's your basic meat-reading run. As the game has evolved over the last two seasons, locks have become ever more important in spreading the ball. Victor Radley topped the charts with 24 passes per game, followed by Jake Chaboyevich with 15, Isaiah with 14, Josh Jackson with 12, Nathan Brown with 10, and Cam Murray with 9. Tamalolo came in at 19th with 4 passes per game. Going back to that list of locks I just read out, and you can now get a look at their numbers of 1 pass hit-ups per game, 
Bradley had four, Jaboyevich had seven, Yo seven, Jackson seven, Brown eight, and Murray eight. Tamalolo averaged ten. That put him equal first for one pass hit ups alongside Luke Thompson and Pat Carrigan. Although Thompson and Carrigan were even greater ball hogs, only passing the ball twice per game. So where does this leave Tamalolo? Well, getting rid of him is a dead set stupid idea. He still averaged nine meters per run last year and will carry the ball for more than 8 metres per hit-up 10 times every game. Meterage is still incredibly important in the game these days, and there isn't another Cowboys player in Kui of Tamalolo's running numbers. To move him on would be detrimental to their ability to get up the field. The Cowboys have two options. They could shift Tamalolo into the front row. His game more than suited that. Or they could put some time and effort into getting him to pass the ball more before the line. He doesn't have to turn into a ball player extraordinaire, but his current passing numbers put him 16th amongst props, let alone locks. Tamalolo is always going to attract defenders. He's simply too big to ignore, but the Cowboys have to get better at exploiting the gaps he opens in the defensive line by getting him to pass, because simply using him as a battering ram is a waste of his contract and his talents. Locks shouldn't be third props these days, and Tamalolo is certainly better than that. If you want more of this content, join Rugby League Monthly for just $5 a month and get your first month free. Subscribers get new videos first and access to exclusive news and features. The links are in the description.